Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at Cyclops, a powerful tool that simplifies Kubernetes management by hiding its complexity under a user-friendly interface. Perfect for development teams interacting with Kubernetes regularly, Cyclops transforms how you deploy and manage applications. Now let's see Cyclops in action. I'll be using Minikube as that's what I'm using locally here for my own development. I have a separate video on how to set up Minikube on your local machine. In that video, I do focus on using Mac OS. Uh, so make sure to check out that video. I'll provide a link to it uh, in the description. But let's go ahead and jump into the documentation here. So to install Cyclops in our Kubernetes cluster, we're gonna use kubectl. And if we look at this command that we're going to about to copy and paste, we're going to do a kubectl apply and we're going to point to a YAML file, which is the Cyclops install YAML file. And it also applies the demo templates YAML file. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here. Run it. And if we look at the output here, it says that it created a, uh, a namespace called Cyclops. It added various components to set up Cyclops, like the UI and the controller. And it also uh, added some demo templates. So now that this has been created, we're going to go ahead and start up Cyclops. And we do this by running the second command in the instructions. And what this is going to do is it's going to forward uh, the internal port 3000 to my host 3000. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And it says here that I should now be able to access via my local host port 3000. So I'm going to open this up in a separate window. All right, in this default installation, uh, we can see we've got a menu that says modules, nodes, and templates. Uh, and there's no modules installed, so it's letting us know that there aren't any that were found. Let's uh, go ahead and click on nodes. This is referencing my Minikube cluster along with some CPU, memory, and pod information. If I click on templates, you can see the three templates that it installed by default in our previous kubectl command. So let's go back to modules, click on add module, and we're gonna select one of the templates that was installed by default, demo-template, and we're gonna give it a unique name application template and then for the application name we'll leave the default of demo dash app replicas is one uh, we'll leave everything default for now it's going to use the container image nginx and the container image a version of 1.14.2 we're going to leave expose your application uh, to turned on so everything is default. All I did was just change the module name and the application name. So I'm going to hit save now. And what it's doing right now is it's actually bringing up the application in my Minikube. Based on that template, it went ahead and created a demo application here. And we can see that there are two resources. One is demo-app service and the other one is demo-app deployment. If we look at the demo-app deployment, it's got a green check mark, which tells us it's healthy. It's running one replica, gave it a name. Uh, it's running on my Minikube. It's currently running. It started two minutes ago. It's using the Nginx uh, image, and we can view the logs here. Let's collapse this, expand this other one. Here we can see the service. It's using HTTP, protocols TCP, and it's using the port 80 and the target port 80. Let's go ahead and collapse this again. So now going back to the demo app deployment here, if I expand this, we can see that we have one replica. What if I wanted to run more than one replica? All I have to really do here is just click on edit under actions and then change this number to three replicas and save it. Then expand the demo-app deployment here. 
and we can see that now we see three replicas listed here. Uh, one that was already running five minutes ago and two that are quickly spinning up. Uh, they're all running. So it looks like they're already in service. Let me go ahead and collapse this. I'm going to go back over here to the nodes uh, tab. And let me take a look at what kind of information I can get on my Minikube cluster here. So I'm going to click on details now. Here I can see that CPU is 7%, memory at 1%, and pods are at 15% of utilization. We can also get detail of all the pods running in, in this Minikube cluster across various namespaces. Let me click on this, see what else it shows. Yep, I can see more Minikube stuff. But let's go ahead and see what else we can spin up. Click on modules and click on add module. Select from the drop down. Let's go ahead and run the Redis demo. We'll give this a unique uh, module name and give the database a name. Here we're given more options authentication, whether or not we want to require a password and of course, number of replicas. Let's go ahead and save this to disk. And when the, within a few seconds, we can see that it's already building out the resources for this. We have a service here being exposed to port 6379. This is the replica service. Here's the deployment where it deployed to Minikube and that it's running. And here's the replica deployment, also letting us know that it's running. Let's go ahead and go back to modules over here. So what this gives us is an easy way to look at what's running in our cluster and being managed by Cyclops. You could even search on it. So if I type in app or skunk, you can see that it'll quickly search through your list of deployed modules. Let's go ahead and go back to our application template here. Let's explore the actions here. Let's click on edit. So we did this earlier where we uh, changed the number of replicas from one to three. Let's click on back. Now let's click on rollback. And this gives us the ability to roll back on to previous versions of our template. Uh, you remember that we changed it from one to three replicas. And how do we know that? If we click on the manifest here, we can see that there is only one replica uh, in the first installation. So let's click OK here and let's roll back to one single replica. What it now gives us is the, the diff between the current um, manifest and the previous manifest. So it's changing from three back to one. So we're going to click OK. And now it should have rolled back. We can see under the demo app deployment, we see only one replica again. So this makes it easy for us to make changes, be able to roll back changes without having to be in the CLI, having to type in all the commands that are needed to do the same type of actions. Let's explore templates now. So I'm going to go ahead and click templates. And these are the three templates that came with um, Cyclops uh, that was part of the installation process. But let, let's take a look at these templates. Let's look at the demo template, the first one here. If I click on uh, the edit button, it gives us information on what repo it's getting that template from. So let me go ahead and grab that repo and paste it into my browser. And we can see here that Cyclops provides a template repository and it has the demo, demo extended, Redis, and dependencies demo. And you can actually also take a look at how these templates are built out. One of the other options that we can see here in the template section is that it has the option to validate. So if we click on this button here, it goes out to the repository and makes sure that the reference is still valid. Uh, that might be in case uh, something ch changes in the remote template and you know, things aren't working correctly. This allows you to make sure that things are set up just like they are in the remote repository. Let me click on these other ones as well. 
You'll notice that they go from gray to green. This tells us that they've been validated. Let's go ahead and create our own template here. Click on Add Template Reference. We're going to use WordPress as our example. For the repository URL, I'm going to use the GitHub uh, repo for WordPress. And inside that repo is bitnami forward slash WordPress is the path to the chart. And I want to get it from the main branch. So I'm going to type that in where it says version. And I got that information by going to the official Bitnami WordPress site and grabbing the information from the, U the URL. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And we can see that my template WordPress is now listed here. Now that we have a template defined, let's go ahead and use it. We're going to go ahead and click on Add Module here. Select the WordPress uh, template. We're going to give it a unique name. And for this, uh, you notice that it does give us uh, the ability to override variables, uh, set some settings for this module. So let's go through each of these. We're not going to use an external database, so we'll leave this alone. Uh, we do want to enable uh, custom domain ingress. Uh, and I'm just going to zoom through these because um, for the sake of time but essentially you do want to go through each of these settings. Uh, so for example, use a new MariaDB database hosted in the cluster. Yes, we definitely want that. Uh, just looking at the persistence, gonna use eight gigs for persistence, metrics. I'm gonna enable metrics. I use this Prometheus exporter for that. And look at persistence, it's using up 10 gigs. We'll leave it alone. I'm gonna look at resources. Uh, I believe this is optional, but I'm going to go ahead and set it. Uh, I'm going to put give it uh, four cores and uh, two gigs of RAM. Secondary ingress, I'm going to enable this as well, because this is what part of what allows you to access the WordPress installation. Let's go into the service, load balancer, yep. Volume permissions, uh, yes, definitely. Want to enable init containers. This sets the permissions for the data volume. Uh, we're going to change the name so that we can see that we did indeed deploy our own instance, Skunk Labs. Uh, and then you have the option to create the initial user and password. So I'm going to give it a super secret password of ABCD1234. And obviously you want to change these settings to something custom if you're going to be running this uh, yourself. I'm just going to put that as my password. Let's look at the MariaDB configuration here. Uh, it is standalone. Um, click on Auth. We give the password for the default custom user, ABCD. One, two, three, four. Same thing for this one, which is the replication user. MariaDB root password. And then, of course, now if you want to create your uh, initial user. So I'm going to give mine a username for the MariaDB. Um, let's look at metrics. Uh, we're going to turn on Prometheus exporter. And for that, we're going to also turn on the operator. Let's look at the secondary, enable persistence. Yes, we want that. And then volume permissions. So I believe with these settings, we should be able to spin up this, uh, this instance of WordPress. Let's go ahead and click Save. And we're going to have to give it a minute to uh, spin up. And after a minute or so, we can already see there are some green check marks here. And in fact, we also see that at the top, there's also a green check mark that tells us that uh, this has been successfully created. But let's take a look at the logs. So let's expand the deployment log here. Click on View Logs. And if we go through all this, we can see that it's 
says uh, WordPress setup finished. Let's take a look at the memcache logs here. Memcache setup finished. Let's look at MariaDB. It did a shutdown, started up again, and it says ready for connection. So all these tell me that this is looking good. To verify that our uh, WordPress installation is working, uh, first we have to go back to our host and type in kubectl port forward uh, service skwp1, just like it matches over here. And we're going to redirect port 8081 on the host to port 80 inside uh, the, um, the cluster itself. So I'm going to hit enter here. And now it's forwarding. We're giving our WordPress. And I'm just going to validate everything's working here. Uh, let's click on sample page. That looks good. And scroll down over here again. I'm trying to see if there's a login link, but there isn't. So I believe it's WP admin. There it is. Our user's user, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. And we should be able to log in with that. And there's our WordPress uh, dashboard. Let's go ahead and create a post in here. Add a new post. Cyclops made this easy. able to install WordPress using Cyclops on my local Minikube Kubernetes cluster. Click on publish. Let's view the post and there it is. Let's go back to modules here. And it's still showing as green, so it's still working. This didn't make it fairly easy to deploy a, an application that got their chart hosted, you know, in their public repo. You know, there's not a lot of bells and whistles to Cyclops, at least not the UI aspect. I would imagine that if you're focused on development, you're not going to be too focused on all the intricacies of, of Kubernetes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you should be. Ultimately, I did find Cyclops pretty easy to use. Uh, it at least made it easy for me to experiment with how to create applications that run inside a Kubernetes cluster uh, without all the complexity. And I definitely encourage you guys to check out Cyclops and yourself and, you know, give it a go and see how it works out for you. I'm curious to, see, to hear from you guys from on the comments section what you guys think of Cyclops. And hopefully maybe I'll make some more videos around Cyclops. So thank you guys. Thanks for joining.